success and purpose are defined by lights. And it's time that we start looking at life through a different lens. Your own lens. Now imagine for a moment, teenage boy enters his very first darkroom photography class. He can barely hold in his excitement as he walks past a shelf that has cameras, lenses, and film. And then he receives his first assignment, nature. It was easy because he was heading on this family trip the next weekend to this beautiful lake, and he thought that if he took these photos of the lake, he would have the best photos in the class. But then the teacher added a twist. The student who takes the best photo wins a pizza. So he packed up his things and he went off to the lake. He snapped away as many photos as he could, all 24 of them, and he carefully packed up the film into a lightproof canister just like this one. The following week, he had to return to school and begin the tedious process of developing all the film in complete darkness. Now think of this like taking a family-sized bag of M&Ms, blindfolding yourself, and then sorting them by color. It wasn't an easy process, but it certainly could be done. So I have some of the negatives here for you all to see. This is his first set. <laughs> and that's the second set. Okay, there's definitely something wrong with that. All the negatives are black. Unless, of course, he forgot the first rule of photography, to take the lens cap off the camera. See, a funny thing happens when we focus on one thing too much. He was too focused on being the best. We forget things and we miss out on what could be just beyond the horizon. Well, the truth about this story was that that boy was me. And these are my negatives, and I certainly did not get the pizza. <laughs> but I learned an invaluable lesson. Sometimes we can be blinded by excitement and leave a lens cap over the things that truly matter most. If you want to start looking at life through your own lens, there's three things that you're going to want to do. Number one is you want to focus on what's important. Number two is you want to capture the good times. And three, develop from the negatives. As a young boy, I was always looking towards the future. And doing these three things are a way to gain a snapshot of your future. At just 14 years of age, there was one thing I wanted more than anything in the world. Pizza, because I didn't get it. So I started a business. And you're probably thinking I made a really cool lemonade stand. And I did. But I didn't realize that the stand part meant stand around, <coughs> desperately waiting for a car to come by, and ultimately chasing them down the street. <laughs> and with that, my dreams of throwing a pizza party, and my first business ever, were flushed down the drain with five gallons of warm lemonade. But I refused to give up. I was focused on success, so I tried again. This time, a computer repair business. I convinced my dad put an ad in the local newspaper. And see, I wanted people to call me to make an appointment. There was no more chasing cars down the street. I was a very busy man at this time. And then I got my first call. The call came in, I ran into the room, I said, Dad, Dad, I need a ride in an hour. I've got a client. Shocked, he kind of sat there, probably questioning whether or not putting an ad in the local newspaper for a 14-year-old boy was the right thing to do. And then he said that one famous line, that all dads are very good at saying. Go ask your mother. <laughs> and just like that, I hired my first intern. My mom became the official driver of Blacksburg Computer Repair. But as fast as you can say Uber driver, and after just two house visits, I had to let my intern go. She told me she couldn't work between the hours of nine to five, Monday through Friday, all summer long. <laughs> and just like that, the blink of an eye, Second business, failed. You know, Bloomberg says that eight out of 10 entrepreneurs will fail in their first 18 months. I was quickly becoming another number. So I decided it was probably a good idea to stay in school and fortunately went on to graduate and get my degree. I was just following the same script that everyone else was following, you know the one. Go to school, get a degree, find a job, find a wife, buy a house, start a family. But this was a script that other people had set out for me, not a script that I wanted for myself. It was time to change the game. 
See, it was like Groundhog Day. I'd get up, go to work, come home, go to sleep, wash, rinse, and repeat. And if you took a photo of my life at that point in time, it might as well have been left blank because I wasn't living my story. Now I went on to have quite a few different jobs, from working at the Apple store to being a photographer on a construction site. And I even went out to get my motorcycle license because at just 24 years old, I thought I was having a midlife crisis. <laughs> Till one day, I met an entrepreneur. He came up to me and he said, why aren't you working for yourself just yet? And I said, well, I don't know how to make this $30,000 a year salary on my own. And he said, you're making a mistake. You're putting your focus in the wrong place. See, you're focusing on making $30,000 in a year when you really need to focus on just making $120 a day, five days a week, for 12 months. It took 10 years to go from being the lemonade stand entrepreneur chasing guards down the road to the videographer extraordinaire that I am now. It took 10 seconds to shift my focus from the holy grail to just taking the first step. See, I was afraid to take risks because it hadn't gone so well in the past. And fear was a huge issue in my life. It was a big reason why I wasn't doing it. But fear can mean many things to many different people. See, on one hand, fear can mean forget everything and run. It can stop you in your tracks. It can rob you from providing an amazing service to the world. But what if you shifted your focus? What if you just changed that definition? And it now meant face everything and rise. I can't tell you that learning to balance that motorcycle allowed me to balance the clients in my business. But just like this roll of film, you get to take another shot. Here's an important question and please pay very close attention. You're in an audience right now. How many of you have been in an audience before and you look around and everyone has their phone out taking pictures? Everyone's got their phone out taking pictures. <laughs> Picks or it didn't happen, right? It's like it doesn't matter unless 100 of your friends know that you were there. It's like you don't matter unless someone else out there in the world is jealous of the life that you live. We paint this picture that we want people to see about our lives because the struggle isn't sexy. If I asked you to recall a point in time in your life, would you instantly go to a Facebook photo? Could you even tell me what it smelled like? What it sounded like? How you felt? So how do we capture life? How do we go about changing this into this? One of the amazing things that my entrepreneur friend taught me was not only how important it is to shift your focus from time to time, but also to step out from behind the lens from time to time. You know that quote from Ferris Bueller, he says, life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop to look around every once in a while, you can miss it. So I went on a journey to discover one thing, a formula for happiness, success, and purpose. And along the way, I learned about a man named Napoleon Hill. Now, Napoleon Hill was tasked by Andrew Carnegie to interview millionaires and find out one simple thing, a formula for success. And he detailed about it in his book, Think and Grow Rich, and I really liked what he did. So I thought, well, I'll go do the same thing. So I found 200 entrepreneurs that had created life on their own terms, and I interviewed all of them on my podcast. And I found that every single one of them had three things in common. One, they learned from the best. They hired mentors. They studied the experts. They had coaches. Two, they shared the information with others. They didn't just keep it to themselves. They had masterminds and meetings and events just like this one. And three, they leave behind a legacy. You know, there's this amazing quote in one of my favorite childhood movies, The Sandlot. They say, heroes get remembered, but legends never die. In the grand timeline of things, our life on this earth is the blink of an eye or the click of a camera shutter. So why wouldn't you go out there and capture everything that life has to offer? You know, sometimes negative things happen in our lives. 
And we have to be able to develop from those negatives. My mantra is ABM, always be moving. I believe that movement is the fountain of youth. You should aspire to move your story forward. Your life can be like one of those choose your own adventure stories without all the flipping back and forth between the pages. But just remember, at the end of the day, when your movie fades and the credits start to roll and the music starts to play, there's only one question to ask yourself. Did you write the story? Did you direct it? Or was it someone else's script? I want to leave you with one last story before I go. On my adventure of interviewing 200 entrepreneurs all over the globe, I met a woman who was the first woman ever to stand up paddleboard the Bering Strait. And in my research on the Bering Strait, I found out that there's two islands in the middle of the Bering Strait. One is called Little Diomede, and one is called Big Diomede. They're only two miles apart. Big Diomede is owned by Russia. And Little Diomede is actually part of the US. It's part of Alaska. Now, why would I tell you about two islands that you've never heard of? Because the international dateline separates the two. Meaning, on one island, it's today. But on the other island, it's tomorrow. If you find yourself on Little Diomede, and you walk over to the shore on a clear day, you're not only looking over into another country. You're looking over into another time. Life is like a camera. You focus on what's important, you capture the good times, and you develop from the negatives. So, here's to the frames of your life that you might not understand right now, but in the future, they'll make a lot more sense. Here's to the mistakes that you'll make, and the people that come in and out of your life as you make those mistakes. Here's to the bad times and the good, every one of these photos a painted picture of a point in time in your life. But just know that if things don't go your way, you can always pull out another roll and take another shot. You know, being able to take that extra shot is so fantastic. But remember that the longer you stare at something, the more out of focus it becomes. When you look at life through your own lens, you don't have to worry about having the whole picture. You just have to make sure that you took the lens cap off in the first place. Thank you.